Hey, Tom. Um, I don't normally do these kind of posts, but today I felt somehow compelled to uh, record something and, and post it. Um, I felt the need to sort of speak to <clears throat> my brothers and sisters. When I say brothers and sisters, I mean, I mean black people. Um, guys, now is our time. Now is our time as black people to really prove to ourselves that we are worthy of happiness, we are worthy of success, we are worthy of wealth, um, and that all the dreams that we have, you know, it's really up to us to sort of go out there and push and make sure that we achieve everything that we set, that we set out to achieve. Um, the one thing that does concern me about us, my brothers and sisters, is that as black people, we never hold each other accountable because it's become so easy for us to blame someone else for something. But I've noticed that black people, we don't hold each other accountable. Every day I wake up grateful. Every day I wake up with, wow, um, I'm in awe of God. A lot of people don't know why uh, I say that. They're probably looking at me and going, yeah, well, it's because you have everything figured out. I don't have everything figured out. Going back to this whole thing about being held accountable, we as black people don't hold each other accountable, so we allow certain things to happen, um, you know, within ourselves and our circles that we, we shouldn't. First thing is this, we don't, we never hold um, each other accountable and never call each other out when we when we brutally and blatantly go out of our way to pull down and destroy another successful black person it's something that happens it, it becomes so normal that nobody really cares about it anymore they just it's normal to trash any black person that sort of um pushes themselves and drives themselves to get out of, you know, their circumstance. The harder you work as a black man, the harder it gets. I mean, we all know it, you know. Uh, there's a saying that uh, it's lonely at the top. It shouldn't be. I feel like there's so much room at the top for every single black person, but it starts with us. Accountability. I made it a point that in my circle, if you're going to be in my circle and you're going to be negative and you're going to be toxic, I'm going to cut you out. I don't care who you are. I'm going to cut you out. I'm not going to even think twice about it. I'm not going to have regrets about it. If you are toxic and negative in my circle, you're gone. You're gone. It's as simple as that. I don't care if you're family. I don't care if you're a friend. I don't care if you're an employee. I just don't care if you are toxic and negative in my circle, you're gone. Why should I keep you? That's what we need. That's the first thing we need to do. We also need to learn how to tell our friends when they're wrong and they uh, step out of line. Because there seems to become this, th there seems to be this fashion, uh, and it was um, propelled by social media where whenever we hear about these. Black people who are in the entertainment industry or black people who are in the limelight or the word that I despise, uh, celebrities, are under fire for whatever reason that it's black people who always push that narrative and give it and give attraction. You've never heard of white people doing certain things and, you know, somebody writes on social media that whatever white man must fall. It never happens. It's always a black man's name before the stupid must fall hashtag. Here's something that I need to share with you guys and that we all know as black people, the most talked about or the biggest conversations that we black people have behind the scenes and never on social media platforms and never in public places or never in, a, uh, in front of a big audience Black people constantly talk about how we don't support each other. It's it's shocking <laughs> at the rate that we talk about it. 
We speak about black on black hate every single day behind the scenes and private conversations, but nobody ever takes it to a public forum. It's because we are hypocrites as black people. We are, we are the biggest hypocrites and actually we are the biggest uh, problem in our own self advancement in life. We need to have these conversations on, on open platforms so, so we understand how serious and how problematic it is. That's why I said accountability. We don't hold each other accountable. When a black person runs to, to um, Twitter and, so, and says all sorts of negative things about others, it's black people who jump onto the bandwagon and make that disturbing conversation, topic, trend, whatever, uh, relevant. If black people ignored that nonsense, there wouldn't be such a thing as a trend. There's a reason why it's called black Twitter. This is not necessarily just about Twitter. It's about the general thing that happens in life, but I'm giving reference to a platform like that because it seems to be the most negative social media platform because of the traffic of black people attacking black people. That's what it is. Uh, black people always find a way to make light of serious situations. They always, we as black people always find comedy out of things that are hurtful and painful to others. We always comment about things that just have nothing to do with a serious real life issue. And we make a joke out of it. We call it banter. We call it this, uh, jokes. We call it, oh, come on, relax. We're just making fun. You're making fun of somebody's pain and heartache. I want to say this to you guys that, you know, the reason why that happens is because of this. And, and, and this is the whole point of this video. It's because we as black people still do not believe that we are worthy of success. We don't believe that we are worthy of wealth. We don't believe that we are worthy of happiness. The most broken people are the ones that will always try to break others. There's a saying, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. It's so true. When you get bullies, whether social media or real life, bullies and people who tear other people down, people who are constantly talking about other people, they do this because they are, the, they, they are going through the most. They are really miserable, hurt people. They, they are suffering. So I actually feel sorry for them. Not, I feel sorry for them. There's a certain compassion that I have towards people who are always speaking hurtful and negative things about others because I know it's a reflection on who they are. It's got nothing to do with others. It's got everything to do with them. Bottom line is this, guys. We need to be able to look at each other and say, hey, stop that nonsense. We need to be able to call each other out and say, no, 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 don't do that. That is BS. Because it is. If we don't do that, we as black people will never really break from these shackles and these chains um, of, I don't even know if oppression is the right word, but of, because I feel like we are on self-destruct mode. We are on self-destruct mode because we don't believe that we deserve good. We don't believe that a, a, a happy, successful black man is deserving and worthy because we're always going to try and find a negative about, about his happiness and his success, which is sad. Our brothers and sisters, you have no idea the number of opportunities out there that are just waiting for us to just grab. If you're going to sit there and waste your time by focusing on other people's businesses and other people's uh, way of living and what another man is doing, you are never going to make it in life. What is going to make this world a better place is, is the day that we as black people start believing that we are worthy, start believing that we can, and stop entertaining nonsense because reality is this. I'm going to say it and it's going to shock a lot of people and disturb a lot of people, but black people react faster to noise than they do to the truth. 
I said it. We react faster to noise than we do to the truth. So anything that is rao rao, we're jumping on it and we're going to have an opinion. And, and part of it is because of a very, a very painful thing that, I, that I've come to accept about us is that it's a reflection on who we are deep inside. We are, we are lacking, we are, we are hurt, we are, we are sad, we are depressed, we are lonely. So we expect that another man's suffering, another man's pain, another man's hardship is something to celebrate. What are we really doing to each other? We're tearing each other down, we're not building each other. And another thing that is a weakness with us black people is that we're always in competition with each other. I don't know why. Let me tell you something. No man is your competition. The problem is you start looking at your life and you start going, okay, this is my life is there's 50,000 lanes in front of me and I'm looking at what that guy's doing, that guy's what he's doing, what she's doing, what they're doing. And that's the problem right there. Um... We shouldn't, we shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be looking at what another man is doing. We should be focusing on what we are doing and what we want to achieve in life. Um, in my life, in my world, I'm alone in my lane. This is my lane, and it's just me. There's no other man, no other human being in this lane that is in front of me. A lot of people ask me how I do it. How I do what, I asked them, how do you succeed? And I said, you assume that I'm successful based on your, your own ideas on what success is. But let me tell you what success is to me. Success to me is finding inner peace in the life that I'm so blessed to live. It's not about materialistic things. It's not about money. It's about being very happy in the life that I believe I'm blessed to live. Every day that I wake up is a blessing. Every day is a gift. I am successful because I feel extremely grateful for what God has done for me. Um, and that one of the biggest gifts that God has ever given me is the spirit of gratitude. The spirit of gratitude makes me appreciate things as they come. I say this to a lot of people. I say, I never feel like I lose in life. Yet I, I get hit with losses on a daily it's tough <laughs> being a black entrepreneur it's extremely hard a lot of entrepreneurs know what i mean when i say that we we are hit with challenges that are beyond us um but one thing that should not be one of those challenges is constantly fighting and trying to prove ourselves within our own or explain ourselves to our own Somebody said to me the other day, which is something that I hear always, this dude walks up to me and he says, let me know how you got those tenders that you got because there's no way you can afford the car that you drive with what you do. And I was saddened by that statement because this was a young black man who honestly feels like I cannot be a black man and drive what he assumes is a car that was meant to be driven by white by white people. That's very sad. Our perception of being black and successful is that you cannot be black and successful because um, you cannot be black and successful and be on the straight and narrow. You have to be corrupt. <sighs> Breaks my heart. That's how little we think of each other as black people. So you see, the problem is actually not any other race or any other human being. The problem is us. We do not believe in ourselves. We do not believe that we are black, we are beautiful, we are, we are successful, and we are meant to have... Um, all the great things in this world. We don't believe it. The minute we start believing it is the minute we're going to stop all this hate. The minute we start believing that we are worthy of happiness and success and wealth and all the good things in this world 
is the day that we're going to stop trying to bring down another black man.